Okay, so let's we looked at our two prerequisite skills. Now let's actually look at the square root property. Um, here's a, here's an example. Easy, one of the easiest examples I could think of. Um, some number squared equals 100. Hopefully we can look at this and being algebra two in high school we can say 10. Definitely 10 squared equals 100. That would solve this equation. That would be one of the solutions. Okay, well 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so x could be 10. But there's another answer to this. Negative 10 squared. A negative 10 is a negative 10 times another negative 10. And if you square negative 10, you also get a 100. So there are two answers to this, right? We, we've seen this already. Quadratics have two answers sometimes. Um, when I have to move this, if I take a squared to the other side, just like when we do, uh, I showed you on the other one, the opposite of a plus 2 would be a minus 2. The opposite of a times 7 is a divided by 7. Uh, the opposite of squaring something, if I brought this to the other side to get x by itself, right, I want to solve for x. When I do that, it becomes a square root, a square root property. And in front of the square root, there has to go a plus or minus symbol. Like it wasn't there to begin with, but when I physically have to go put this square root symbol on this problem, there is a plus or minus symbol in front of it. And yes, plus or minus 100, or plus or minus the square root of 100 is a positive 10 or a negative 10. Square root property. Awesome. Okay. Um, that's it for this one. Move on to the next one.